3-3, systems of inequalities. So previously, when we talked about systems of equalities, we were looking for a point where two lines intersect. Now, if you recall back to graphing a two-variable inequality, we're going to have to graph some sort of region. And with a system of inequalities, we want to figure out where that region, where those two regions overlap. Okay. So our objective is to solve a system of linear inequalities. And you need to know that you can solve a system of inequalities in more than one way. Graphing is the one we're going to talk about. So graphing the solution, that's usually most the most appropriate. The other method is making a table. Okay? Um, that method works best when you have a very discrete sample as opposed to a, uh, a line. So when you're talking about like a real world situation where you can only have one of something or two or three, then a table is usually the best method. But what we're going to look at today, we're going to look at mostly graphing. Okay? And the solution is the set of all points that are solutions to each inequality of the system, meaning that we are going to have more than one answer, right? The, re the answer is going to be every point in a particular region. Okay. An inequality and a system of inequalities can have many solutions. That's what we just said. A solution of a system of inequalities is also a solution for each inequality of the system, which should make sense. Just like a system of equations, that point that you found works for both of the two equations in the system. Um, our inequality is going to work for each inequality in the system. Okay? So we're going to focus on solving a system by graphing. Okay? Recall that when the variables of a linear inequality represent real numbers, a graph solution consists of half a plane and possibly its boundary line, either uh, with a solid line or a dotted line, depending on whether it is greater than or less than, or greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Thus, for two inequalities, the solution is the overlap of the two half planes. And we'll see how this works right here. So first, when we're going to go about graphing, when we're going to solve the system with graphing, we always want to remember the easiest way to graph a line. Okay? We want to make sure that it is in slope-intercept form, because okay? that's going to be the easiest way. So let's take a look at the first equation. 2x minus y is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay? That's not in slope-intercept form. So let's subtract 2x from both sides, giving me negative y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 3. Then I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And remember, the cardinal rule of an inequality is that when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must switch the inequality sign. So it switches from greater than to less than or equal to. And then it changes to 2x plus 3. So now that we have slope-intercept form, Let's graph, okay? So we start with a dot at three, and my slope is gonna be up to right one, slope of two, okay? And because this is a solid, or because this is or equal to, I'm gonna make a solid line, slightly crooked, but it's okay. okay? Remember back to last chapter, in that we have a less than inequality now. So because it is less than, we are going to shade below the line. So this is the region of my line that I'm going to shade right here. Okay. And I'll use the smart boards fill feature to fill it in. Okay. And we'll make it yellow. Lighten it up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So there's the region that is the solution of my first equation. Okay. That's only the first equation, however. So now I have my second equation, which is y is greater than or equal to negative one-half x plus one. Okay. Luckily, this equation is already in slope-intercept form. All we have to do now is graph it. So I put a dot at one. My slope is negative one-half. That means down one, right two. Down one, right two. And again, it's going to be a solid line because it is or equal to. Now, I look at the equation and see that I have a greater than inequality. 
So because it's a greater than inequality, I shade above the line. So the region that's going to be part of my answer is above this line. And when I fill it in with blue, okay, and I click on my region, the part that overlaps will automatically turn green because yellow and blue make green. So we can see that this region right here, okay, is the region where these two, that's the region where these two inequalities overlap. So if I were to pick any random point from this region, like that one, like that's 3-3, three, three, and I were to plug 3-3 three, three into either one of these two equations, both of them would be true. If I were to plug, say, 0-0, zero, zero, it would work for the first equation, but not for the second, because the region didn't cover up because that point is in the yellow section. Okay? Only points that are in the green section would be true for both equations, both equations. Okay? Okay. Sometimes we can model a real situation with a system of linear inequalities. So solutions to real world problems are often whole numbers. So only certain points in the region of overlap will solve the problem. For instance, like this system right here with a fundraising problem. So your city's cultural center is sponsoring a concert to raise at least $30,000 for the city's used services. Tickets are 20 bucks for the balcony seats and $30 for the orchestra seats. If the center has 500 orchestra seats, orchestra seats, how many of each type of seat must they sell? Okay, so let's figure this out. Let's call balcony seats X and orchestra seats Y. So let's look at the money first. So that would be 20X and 30Y. And that's how much money I'm going to be raising for this concert. Okay. Now I want to make sure that my goal is to raise at least $30,000. That means what I want to raise should be bigger than that. Okay. There's my first equation. My second equation, I know that the number of orchestra seats, or the, that I only have 500 orchestra seats. So that means that Y can't sell more. You don't want people standing up in the back, right? That Y has to be bigger than 500. I would also argue that X and Y both have to be positive because you can't sell a negative amount of seats. But these two equations are enough for us to sort of graph the solution. And I'm not going to try to draw a graph myself. I have a nice graph that I pulled from Desmos. Okay, So we can see that these two lines, right? Here's my orchestra seats in the blue. Okay, And then the red is my other function. And I can see that these two overlap in this region. So any ticket sold in that region, any combination of tickets sold in that region will give will make me enough money. And of course, if we were to really analyze this situation, there would also be an upper limit to the amount of seats we could sell, right? We have an upper limit for the amount of orchestra seats. There should be also an upper limit for the amount of uh, balcony seats as well. So at some point, there's going to be a line over here, which is going to be the maximum amount of tickets that I could sell for the balcony. All right. Now, not only can we graph regular inequalities, but we can also do this with nonlinear inequalities. And so far, we've studied one nonlinear inequality specifically, and that is an absolute value nonlinear, an absolute value inequality. So when we're going to graph this one, we're going to do it the same way. Make sure it's in standard form or slope intercept form. Okay. If it's a line, standard form for an absolute value equation if it is an absolute value. So my first one is, and it says that y is less than or equal to 3. That one's nice and easy. Okay. That is just a horizontal line. And I want y to be less than that. So that means that my region is going to be below. So again, just in case. And let's do the same thing. Let's do yellow and blue. So here's my yellow. Okay. Now let's do my blue. 
right? It's an absolute value. So I know it's going to look like a V. And this tells me that my vertex is at positive 1, 0. So I put a dot. This tells me that the slope of the right-hand side is going to be 1. Right? It's a solid line because it's greater than or equal to. And then in order to complete my V, the slope of the left-hand line is the opposite, which means that my slope was 1, so my slope over here is going to be negative 1. Okay. Now, looking at the equation, I see that Y is greater than that, the absolute value of X minus 1. So that means that my shading is going to be above the line. So everywhere above the line is going to be shaded in. And blue again, which will make my overlap green. So it's the green area that will make both of these inequalities true. And that it will be the solution to the system. Now there is no limit to the amount of equations that you could try to find where they are all going to overlap. Okay? Um, the only thing is that your overlapping will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And if they, if one line doesn't overlap anymore, then the system would have no unique solution, right? Only some of them would have a solution.